Joe, speaking of that wall, uh, Jovan Durant, do you expect him to be full go academically uh, ready to go here when camp opens? Uh, well, I don't want to make any comment on, on that right now. Uh, we expect all our guys to be ready to go. So uh, we'll see what happens. You were talking about those freshmen. What do you do to kind of get them acclimated during this time so they don't hit that wall in game three or four, um, just for overall the purposes? Well, I mean, you know, I don't know if there's anything you can do, you know, when you go back to my era that freshman just didn't play. I mean, it was unheard of that a freshman got in and played, and so he kind of had his role now, on the football team. He was a developmental guy, and you weren't expecting him. He took a back seat and got on the taxi squad and did scout team and kind of, well, now as, as graduation, guys graduate early, as guys go out in the NFL early, as guys get injured, scholarships were cut, and now obviously over a while now, freshmen are dependent on, especially situationally. And, and those are the guys you worry about. Sometimes the other guys you don't. So, uh, yes, you got to take care of them in the summer, and you got to take care of them in the off season. But the ones that are actually going to play a part, you got to be real careful because again, they're going to hit a wall now. They're just not used to that grind. They're not used to this process. Um, I've been a part of some guys that, that never flinched. They were freshmen and just kept on going. Each guy's different. When they, when they do hit that wall, what do you do to kind of get them through it? Uh, is there any certain thing that... You know, I don't remember ever stopping and thinking about it. I mean, usually when it happens, you're in the middle of the season, you say, hey, look here. I mean, you know, go take some BC powder and hit a Red Bull and slow down. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you know, this is the way it is, dude. Right. Welcome, welcome to the service here. Yeah. You know, we got wars to fight, you know. Right. All you guys do the same thing. It doesn't matter you, Texas, Tech, uh, Oklahoma, or whatnot. But do you ever, as a coach, just say, are we doing all that we need to be doing, or, or do we need to be doing more? Does that ever go through your mind while everybody else is preparing? Or do you have a plan that you've done it long enough and this is what we got to do and, and kind of go from there? Well, there's two things that, that, that I think professionally that, that have, have, have yet to be answered. And that, that are always a, a dilemma at staff meeting tables. Number one is, do you, hit, do you hit enough? And when you hit so much, then when is too much to hit? Well, if you don't hit enough, you're not tough enough, you're not physical enough. Well, if you hit too much, no one's left, and you beat everybody up. So where is that measurement? Well, the same thing in work ethic. At what point does the workaholic begin to really give no dividends and I'm a prime example I'm always thinking to myself and I'm I'm concerned someone's out working me in every single phase of what we do and then to me um, you know, that's your win that, that's a winning edge but it can also be scary as uh, you gotta be able to get away from it you know? so that little voice in the back of your mind saying what's Oklahoma What's Texas doing? That's just part you know, of the I guess uh, as an athlete it did, yeah. but as a coach, as you get older, it's what more can I do? What hasn't been done? What can I do to make me better? What can we do to make West Virginia better? Let's make us the very best we can do. Are we taking time off here, or can we be driving the point home here? Can we get better there? What can we do instead of just sit and wait? There's got to be something we can do in this window of time here, this little small five-minute window of time. So, yeah, that's, that's continuous 24-7.